Church friends, guests, I am Phyllis Coates, pastor at this great church. We welcome you because this is the day the Lord has made. We will be glad in it and we want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this worship service as we give God's word to God's people. We hope you receive the Holy Spirit through the words, the songs, and the prayers. And we trust that all of you are doing well and taking life one day at a time. Our location is 6401 Hickory Grove Road, Charlotte, North Carolina. We are a multicultural United Methodist Church where we serve many different cultures. And we're spreading the branches of God's love through many ministries, traditional, contemporary, Latino, and African venues. But we are one church. We have a few announcements this morning. We are in a Bible study series based on John. The book is An Invitation to John. We welcome and open this opportunity to study God's word with Mr. Tom Fox as our teacher. And each Wednesday night, we meet via Zoom. Books can be obtained by just calling the office and letting us know your interest. To reach Tom Fox, his email address is at the, t, the fox at windstream.net. thfox at windstream.net. We are blessed to be an agent for God with the room in the end. This is a program for the homeless. Once a month and for February, it will be on the 10th. Please call Betty Miller at 704-905-2312. We really need volunteers for this ministry. A list of all 
A list will be coming up for all programs for the year, and it will be available in your next bulletin and on the webpage after the 30th of January, 2022. Remember, be safe in these uncertain times, and don't forget to keep on praying. Please check our website again for all of our ministries and programs, and have a blessed day. to share the good news of God's love. But who am I that, that God, God should, should call, call me? You are a beloved child of God. But I am weak. I am not a great speaker or preacher. God is with you. Don't be afraid. Lord, help me to trust in your presence with me. Help me to serve you. God has called each of us, each one of us to serve using the gifts we have been given. I don't know where to start. Place your trust in God's guidance. What if I fail? God is with you. Place your trust in God's presence. Help me, O oh God, to trust in you and in your gracious gifts to me. Help me to serve others in your name. Amen. Amen.
doing the invocation. Gracious God, we come to you today seeking your guidance and strength. You've called us to ministries for which we feel inadequate. Help us to understand that it is your love that will support and sustain our efforts. Give us the courage to place our trust in your abiding presence. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. expectations you know how easy it is for us to make excuses for inactivity we love to run and hide when a task is set before us we look at the expectation and think that we don't have the abilities the strength or wisdom to accomplish this task we think too often that we are doing these things all by ourselves and we feel sorry for ourselves and angry that you expect so much from us. Forgive our ignorance, our stubbornness, and our stupidity, O oh Lord. 
Help us to understand that the opportunities for service that you offer to us also come with you abiding presence, love, and support. It is your love which makes the impossible possible. Turn us around and place us back on the path of joyful service. Let our work be part of the fulfillment of the mandate of Jesus Christ when he made his proclamation in the synagogue so long ago. For it is in his name that we pray. Good morning, church. Let's worship our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Compassionate Father, thank you that you are our strength and our song. You fill our hearts with joy. May we give our offerings to you with gladness and joy. Everything we have belongs to you, and we, we rejoice to give some of your abundant gifts back to you. Bless the tithes and offerings we give today. Let the majesty of the Father be the light that guides us the compassion of the Son be the love that inspires us, and the presence of the Spirit be the power that empowers us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only re a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I ever give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails, but when there are prophecies, they will cease. When there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put a ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. This morning, our text, as you already heard the scripture reading, is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. Our text this morning was written by the Apostle Paul in response to what was happening in the church in Corinth. You see, my brothers and sisters, the sea, let me talk about the city of Corinth first. The city of Corinth was situated on an isthmus, which is a narrow piece of land separating northern and southern Greece. Uh, this city was an important and basic city in Greece because it was a trading city. People came from far and near to trade and exchange ideas there. In fact, Apostle Paul spent 18 months in Corinth on his second missionary journey, and not only that, but he established a church there as well. The church that Paul established in Corinth was a diverse church comprising of different group groups of people. Yes, this church had widows, they had uh, men, they had women, they had poor, they had free, they had slaves, they have the rich. And they have those who were poor, as I said. It was a church that had everybody. They had the Gentiles who were converted. They had the Jews also in the church. I believe it was a multi-ethnic cultural church like Hickory Grove United Methodist Church. Everybody was in this church. And you see, let me just put this in. Uh, our text this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, is often used at weddings, perhaps to describe the value of romantic and humanly love. My brothers and sisters, Paul was not addressing 
the love that is being preached at weddings, but he was addressing issues of pride, issues of division, issue of self-gratification in the church in Corinth. These issues were centered around their spiritual gifts. You see, in chapter 12, Paul talks about spiritual gifts. And he told them that these gifts brings about unity in the church. These gifts are both for in the in the eyes of God in, in God's kingdom. My brothers and sisters, members of this church in current were more focused on actively pursuing spiritual gifts and forgetting about one thing, love. Now, let me stop there. It is not a bad thing to, to pursue spiritual gifts. It is not a bad thing to pray to God to, to speak in tongues. It is not a bad thing to pray to God to, to have the, the, the gift of prophecy, the gift of mystery, the gift of knowledge. It is not bad at all, but it shall be with love. So then Paul had to come and address this situation. And he began to address this situation in chapter, in verses 1 of chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. He said, if I speak in tongues of Mortal, which has been and of angel, but do not have love. I am a noising gun or a clinging symbol. Yes, if I speak with tongues, if I if I can speak tongues, if I can pray in tongues of, of men and of angel, if if God can give me the voice of an angel, but have not the agape love. All my speaking in tongues is like a noise. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith that can move mountain, but not have love, I'm nothing. You see that? If I have faith that can remove mountain, but if it is not predicated, if it is not surrounded by love, by agape, I'm nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and by high and if I hand over my body to be burned, but not have love, I gain nothing. Yeah, what he's saying here in these three verses that whatever we do, whatever gift God gives us, it shall be predicated, it shall be based on love. Even if you have the anointing to preach, let your preaching be with love. Then he went on to tell us what love is. He went on to admonish us if we have love. You see, my brothers and sisters, he admonishes us that even through, even though we, we possess all, excuse me, even though we possess all these gifts, if we have not love, 
the agape. Our gifts are worthless. He went on to describe what love actually is. The agape love. The love that endureth forever. The long suffering. He went on to say, love is patient. You see, the Greek word that is used for patient is macrotomia, which means to go with, to endure with you, to do long suffering, to bear with you, that like Christ can bear with us. Love is kind. It does not hurt anybody. It does not harm anybody. It is not envious. <laughs> it does not undermine anyone. Love does not get angry because of your gifting. It is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It got to be my way or else nothing else will happen. Love is not like that. It is not irritable. It is not quick to be anger or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Like when you hear something about your friend, every bad thing about your friend, you're ready to pick up the phone and call everybody and discuss that. It is not love. But rejoice in the truth. It always pick up the good things. It never see the wrong. It bears all things. Believe all things. Hopes all things. Endure all things. My brothers and sisters, Paul is emphasizing the importance of love within the church. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Love is the key ingredient of our faith. Let me say that again. Love is the key ingredient of our faith. Without love, we cannot please God. I heard 1 John 4, it says, Love it not, know it not God, because God is love. Love is the glue that holds us together. Love unifies the church. Love builds a community. If we would be a church that God is counting on, We should have love. Not loving those that look like you. Not loving those that speak like you. Not loving those that live in the same community like you. Not loving those that went to school with you. But loving everyone in the body of Christ. Be a white, be a black, be a Hispanic, be a Asian, be a Native American, be it on educated, educated. Love somebody. My brothers and sisters, the good news in this text is. 
that we have already been known fully. That's why he said in a word, by God, we are not left alone to figure out this love called agape. And we are not, a, we are not left alone to, to kind of scramble and, 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 and kind of have a long sleepless night to, to see how best we can, we, 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 we can work on this love. The Holy Spirit is here to help us love unconditionally because God loves us unconditionally. My brothers and sisters, I will close. Our theme say, what love got to do with it? What? What love got to do with my spiritual gifting. What love got to do with my walk with God? What love got to do with my sinking in the choir? What love got to do with me teaching the, the, the children church? What love got to do with me being an archer? Archer. What love got to do with it? Love has everything to do with it because it is the most excellent way to the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Blessed Holy Spirit, Amen.
Good morning, everyone. As we prepare to end this morning's worship service, let us take the words of the prayers, the songs, and the sermon into our hearts and let them guide us during this coming week. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this time together today. And now as we prepare to go out into the world, let your word guide us. Let your prayers, the prayers that we have prayed, uplift us and let the words of your scriptures and the sermons be our guide. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.